From the heartland of America to every nation on Earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. As always, it is wonderful to be with you. And I looked out the window today and I thought, spring, I love it, don't you? I love spring. When I was a little girl in school, I'll never forget our teacher uh, teaching us something that <laughs> remained with me. Spring is here, the grass is riz. I wonder where the flowers is. Not good English, but certainly does express how wonderful it is to have spring. And you love it too, Jack. Oh, yeah, and I like the idea about the young lady uh, begins to look for a mate uh -huh. and set begins to chase her. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'll oh. tell you about this half later. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, you know, Jack has expressed a great need for our program to focus on what's happening in the world, and we're going to. This will be the main thing from this point on, but this week I have something special that I want to share with you, and I believe that it will come into your heart and maybe even help your family as we share the special things. But my, oh my, the havoc going on in this world with floods, hurricanes, murder, oh my, oh my, it just breaks our hearts sometimes. Like what just went on in Paris and what went on, oh, so many places that we could talk about in the world. But so many of you have asked, how has Jack Van Impe become the man that he is. In fact, I wrote a book. I'm going to be talking about that later, too. Uh, it's called Dr. Dr. Jack Van Impe, Dynamic and Dedicated. Oh, my, oh, my. That's what he is, dynamic and dedicated. How did he become such a man coming out of such a home? Maybe you're in that kind of a home right now. I'm going to be expressing a lot today. And maybe you think, oh, that's me. How can I become dedicated to the Lord? How can my life turn around like Jack's life turned around? But uh, we're going to start by, I went through some of our pictures, and I think we've never shown these. But I think that you're going to enjoy this program especially uh, because it not only talks about his life, but about his past. Oscar and Louise Van Impe. My, oh, my, what a wonderful, wonderful couple they were. And there they are with Jack after he was a teenager there, happy there in Detroit, Michigan. I'm going to back up. The Cashew Cafe, his father, well, I'm sorry to say, became an alcoholic and was playing the accordion at the bar. For the Belgians. Yeah, for the Belgians. Well, look who he invited in. Jack Van Impe, five, six years old. He went into the <laughs> bar. They kind of hid this from, you know, the government <laughs> against the law. But my, oh, my, you can see Jack was a great, great accordionist. And he used to go in and play there with his father. But, you know, friends, he saw his dad, an alcoholic, going on. Wonderful, except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. And there they are playing the accordion after his dad gave up alcohol, accepted Christ into his life. And there they are at the bottom about that time. How wonderful. Well, handsome young man. He continued playing the Amen. accordion <laughs> after he accepted the Lord a teenager playing the accordion in rallies, all kinds of rallies around the world. Here he is again, playing at rallies. Billy and, Graham. And how, yes, I'm going to come to that, Jack, how much he loved to play the accordion, not in the bars, but for the Lord. Here he is. I love this picture. Handsome, handsome. Well, Jack brought it up. He was playing his accordion in Canada. And there was Billy Graham speaking in Canada. And my, oh my, I'm going to go to Jack now because Billy Graham came over to him. Billy Graham saw in Jack something very special, 
a young man that not only was great on the accordion, but something special in him. Jack, he affected your life, didn't oh, he? Well, you know, I was quite an accordionist. You saw me, the like a little guy, five years of age. But later, I was doing two and three hours of practice daily, and I could do the flight of the bumblebee, 16 notes per second as a kid. Once in a while, I made a mistake and it became the blight of the bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I worked at this thing. For sure. I had over 500 songs I had personally written and hymns that I've arranged along with all my great concert music. And oh, I loved what I was doing. Well, one day my dad said, you know, I, I really flubbed. Uh, we have to go to this church tonight. Harvey Springer is here and they need us. But I promised Billy Graham you'd be there. Son, we're going to have to split up tonight. I'll go to the church with Harvey Springer and you go to be with Billy Graham. Hallelujah. That was the beginning. <laughs> right. When I got through playing, Billy said, I want to take you out to eat. And he said, young man, if I could play the accordion like that, I'd quit preaching. And he said, I want you in all of our rallies. I am the director of Youth for Christ for all American Canada. And I'm going to book you all the time for the next few years. And that's how I got to college, through the money that was given to me through Youth for Christ rallies every Saturday night for three or four years. Well, this man became my friend. And you know, uh, something very exciting happened. After I reached 50 years into the ministry, I get this co contact from Billy, and he had been advertising me always to the churches. I even got 1,500 churches on the waiting list besides the Youth for Christ rallies. And so I had 800 church crusades, and that, Billy was behind it. And I was on television as well, and he wrote me, when it was my 50th anniversary in the ministry, he said, Jack, I've loved you for a long time. And this letter is hanging here in this building, and we're going to open this building starting June for you to come and see from all over the world. We're going to open it as a headquarters. Now, the wonderful thing is, he said to me in that letter is hanging here, he said, I have listened to you now, and I always thought you were a wonderful preacher. But right now, he said, I personally am envious of your Bible knowledge. Oh, my. Oh, my. It moved my heart. Dr. Jeremiah, he said recently in the radio twice, and I've only been told about it, said, and I've learned everything I've learned from his books. Dr. McVitie has the great college now in Canada, and I'm backing it. And he has 12 colleges in the world, even in Korea. And he said, this man is so knowledgeable. He memorized the whole book and he's gone through it 40 times. The only man who's memorized it and read it through 40 times. And he said, no one graduates from my school who does not study. Oh, Dr. Van Impey's works. Oh, I could say so much. Dr. J. Vernon McGay, I preach for him. Guess what? He saw so much happen in the largest church in California. The movie stars were coming forward, getting saved. He said, I've never seen anything like this, folks. I've changed his name from the Walking Bible oh to my. the Belgian <laughs> Bible Bombshell. <laughs> oh, it's been a great, great day. Hey, this is my legacy tonight yeah, so, oh, at yeah. the beginning for the next few months. Jack, I'm going to back up, though. Uh, he's already uh, talking about uh, having United Crusades. I'm going to back up to where Jack really came from playing the accordion to becoming a minister. He felt led of the Lord that he should go on beyond entertaining with the accordion in churches and crusades. He wanted to be a minister. Take a look. I love this picture. He was outside of his home there in Detroit, and he was saying, I want to preach. I want to preach. <laughs> I love that. That's the now, way they used wait, to do it. Jack, how can a young man come from a nightclub and come to a point in his life like that where he's saying, I want to preach? I'm going to talk about that in length in just a moment. But that's what God can do. And perhaps you're in a situation like Jack's. God can do that with you. You can become a real 
minister of the Lord, caring for people, and also sharing your testimony. Well, you became the walking Bible. He said, I, if I memorized all those um, songs, I can memorize the Bible. And there he is. The Bible became such a part of his life. He became known as the walking Bible. Here he is, preaching in a crusade, preaching in churches. Why, I like that picture. It's so much like who he was for so many years. And then this one, of course, very good picture of Jack Van. Hubba, hubba, yeah. that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I'm going to go on. I was going to stop here. But I'm going to go on to something else. Because he not only wanted, not only wanted friends to preach in churches, but he wanted to go around the world. And that's what God has called him to do. As you well know, I want you to take a look at this. God called him to go around the world, first of all, with radio, using radio to take the gospel who, where, to all nations. There he is, taking the gospel to all nations. I like this picture, too, in front of the radio. And there he is, giving the word of God, the walking Bible. How can he come out of a nightclub and actually become a man that God could use around the world. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Not only in churches, but there's crusades. Whew, 10,000 people gather together in so many areas of the United States and other countries. 234 too. of those, 50 yes. million attending. And here 50, we are. 50,000 pastors backing us. Here we are again, Jack, at another United Crusade. Well, somebody recognized whoo, who he was. Uh, and, uh, you know, the Lord certainly laid it on Dr. Lee Robertson's heart to have Dr. Jack Van Hippy, Christian scholar, and uh, come to his school. He had 2,000 uh, young people in college there in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and he gave Jack his first doctorate. I'm going to go to Jack here. Jack, how many doctorates do you have? Now, we're not bragging but he earned it. Certainly different ones would call him, like Dr. Lee Robertson, and say, we would be privileged, we'd like to give you. But Dr. Lee Robertson gave the first one. And you never forget going there. You got out of the car, and uh, you ask him. <laughs> this fellow comes out to the car, and he's got the biggest church in America. And he carries all the things in, my accordion in the works. And I said, oh, you're, you're a great janitor. I said, could I meet Dr. Robertson? He said, I am Dr. Robertson. <laughs> he says, and I, I am a servant for God, and I'm helping you. And he started me with that first doctor's degree. Yes, Jack. But they kept coming. I have now 16 different doctor's degree, most of them because I memorized this Bible. And I've been told repeatedly, Jack, you know the Bible better than any man. I debated people. I've never lost a debate in my life because the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And I never gave my own answers. It was always God's Word, thus saith the Lord. And I'm telling you, the souls kept coming. We, right at this point of life for Excella, before we started the new radio ministry, have personally won seven million to Jesus. Oh, Amen. thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. I'm not bragging. I'm a humble servant who loves God. And I give everything. In fact, I almost did give everything recently. You'll hear about it. I lay on my deathbed. Well, going on, Jack, I just want to say this, that... The Lord has used Jack in a very, very dynamic way. First of all, uh, I'm going to kind of back up a little bit because I'm going to enter the picture. We're going to do a little bit of our life together here. I met Jack uh, when he was preaching. He was already a minister. And I'm so happy to say that, oh, God, thank you. I came out of a Christian home, a godly home. Rex and Esther Shelton. And I said to Jerry, our director, guess who I was named after? You see the first word, Rex, my father. And they already had a son and they were expecting a daughter. So Rex Ella, oh my, what godly, godly men they were. 
Well, someone led me to the Lord, Dr. Robert Shelton, my, my older brother. Well, I'll never forget the night. I want to stop here, if I could, please. I will never forget the night that I was in church with my mom and dad. And I came out in the car and I said, uh, you know, Dad, I was a teenager. I was 17 years old. Here, I was reared in a Christian home. I led some of my high school friends to the Lord. I knew all about the Lord, but I didn't know him. And the Lord spoke to me that night, and I said, Daddy, I don't think I know the Lord. And I thank God for what he said to me. He didn't try to build me up. Now, you're a good girl. You go to church, all that. No. He leaned over, and he said, Rexella, make sure how grateful I am for that. Because I went home, went in my bedroom, I started crying, praying. Oh God, I want to be sure that I'm your child. My brother Bob heard me, my older brother. He was already in college. He came in and he said, Rexella, why are you crying? I said, Bobby, <laughs> I don't think I'm saved. Thank God for what he did. He knelt by his, my bed and he said, accept the Lord now, be sure. Mm. You know, a lot of you yeah. watching right now might know all about the Lord, but do you know him? There's a big, big difference. You can know all about him and even lead somebody else to the Lord, but do you know him? How grateful I am. Jack, I accepted the Lord then. Yeah. And my brother Bob, I'm gonna let Jack tell the story, uh, was speaking at a church Jack Van Abbey, Tom Malone's also. And that's where you met Bob. Yeah. We ought to tell how um, he brought you home to meet me. <laughs> okay. You know, I was at this church, and guess who the guest singer was? Rexella. And I said, wow. Ooh. God, answer my prayer. I want her. Well, I went up to her and said, would you like to go to the Greasy Spoon for a burger? <laughs> she said, oh, I, I got my steady with me. I go with her. Uh, oh. And I went home and I said, oh, Lord, she's the one. And I couldn't get her off my mind. Well, little did I know that she was Bob Shelton's sister. And we both started working for Dr. Parr, Gilead Baptist Church, as youth people. And one day he said, I want to take you home. I said, fine. I get in there and I look at, that's the girl, hallelujah. <laughs> oh boy, I got speaking in tongues. I became Pentecostal. And we started oh. dating. Now, one problem, Bob guarded his sister. And every date, he sat there on the couch with us. <laughs> of course. I wanted to take her hand. I'm a man, I wanted to give her a kiss. But he would have stopped it. <laughs> So one day I said, Lord, do me a favor and give him a case of diarrhea. <laughs> anyway, God better. He sent Bob to the great mission field. Chiang Kai-shek said, I need a man here. Bob was at Bob Jones University. A man who can reach all my people. I'm taking them out of China because they're killing my Christians. And I'm taking them to Taiwan. And Bob was there for a good year. And while he was there, mm. I got my little snitches <laughs> in, and we uh -oh. got married. He came home and said, couldn't you wait? I said, no. <laughs> I was getting a year older every time. <laughs> and boy, what a wedding it's been. This, no, you can, this is the godliest woman you oh. ever met. Bob's the godliest man I ever met. What a family. And uh, Thank you, she made me what I am spiritually. The Lord saved me, and when a man's born again, he changes. And because I memorized the word, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. That was it. But this girl kept me at it. She led the prayer every day, read the Bible, but made sure we had devotions. And whenever I got discouraged, she was there. Thank you, oh, sweetheart. And when I was on a deathbed in a coma, you, lay, you came every day. <laughs> and sat there five hours a day. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Oh, gee. That's right. You know, you got a lot of these evangelists today and their wives and they're divorced now. 
I don't understand it. Ministers of the gospel. Well, I'll, I'll keep this little girl forever. Amen. Well, we're gonna I'm be here, together and too. the doctor said, you're alive. I was dying. Yes. I've had cancer. I've had a heart attack. I went into a coma for 80 days, and then 16 weeks at home. And he said, you're alive because she was there with you. Well, we knew it was the Lord as well. Amen. Oh, oh thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you. you. Well, you know, I'm going to go on just very, very quickly. Our time just flies by, but, you know, I hope that this program, you'll identify with it personally, how God can change a life, how God can help you to be more than you ever thought that you could be for him because he wants to use you. Uh, let's go on to this next picture. <clears throat> I love this next picture so much. <laughs> Abba, <laughs> Abba. Going on, the tender touch, oh my, my. I trust that I've always been uh, a part of Jack's heart and life, and there we are on radio. I joined him. He was already on radio. My, he was doing such a great job. And what then, a soloist yes. he was every night. Oh, oh, thank you, Jack. Well, we did together after we were married, 19 hour-long primetime specials. And we had about 60,000 people respond to one single television special. And we followed up with the, more than 6,000 churches Oh, and I love this picture because it tells you where we are right now. New television format, Jack Van Impey presents. I love it. Interpreting today's news in the light of Bible prophecy. That's exactly what we're doing. And we're going around the world here, Ambassadors for Christ. What on earth are we doing? We're going around the world. I love that picture too. And then, um, thank the Lord, we've been very, very privileged to have received from Religion and Media about 33 Angel Awards. Oh, what an honor to serve the Lord. Honor to serve the Lord. There are just a few of them. And, of course, I want to close with this. I'm going to Jack then. Go ye into all the world, reaching the mission field. There we are. I believe that was taken in Belgium, in front of one of the cathedrals there in Brussels. But how wonderful it is to go around the world coming from can you believe a five-year-old boy playing his accordion in a nightclub god can do that for you whatever your life needs the lord can do it for you yes jack is special in many ways but so are you oh jack thank you for what you've been you have done exactly what god called you to oh, do yeah. and next week i'll tell you why we are now reaching Seven billion six hundred million people in the world weekly. In fact, twice now, and with YouTube included, it's 15 billion. It's never been anything like it. We are the largest missionary organization in the world. And when you folks begin to back us financially, you become a minister with our new movement. I'll tell you all about it next week. Oh, God. We just receive Jesus. How have I changed? Except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. How do you get born again? Christ died on the cross to take away every sin we've ever committed. And when you come to Christ, you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. And when you stay in that word, he says, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Pray it. Lord, I want what this couple has. Jesus. I want you, Lord. I want to be saved forever. I want to be with you in the great kingdom of heaven that's coming to earth soon. You're going to return soon, and I want to be ready. Jesus, I receive you now. Come into my heart. I pray in your holy, beautiful name. Amen. 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 Oh, Jack, thank you so much that you allowed God to use you in such a wonderful way. And so many... Thousands, millions have accepted Christ. If you're one of them, write to me this week. I'll send you this little book of first steps in a new direction. The Lord wants to walk with you in a new direction, just like he walked with Jack in a new direction. His life was going one way. Amen. God, had, God took him into another way. Praise the Lord. Our mailing address is Jack Benibby Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. 
Remember to ask for your free copy of the booklet, First Steps, when you write. Our address, once again, is Jack Penelope Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. You'll be glad you did. And now I just want to say that I referred a few moments ago to a book that I wrote about Jack Van Impey. Jack Van Impey, Dynamic and Dedicated, A Man and His Mission. I wrote this book. And handsome too, honey. Oh, you bet, you bet. <laughs> there are some wonderful pictures in here, but mainly uh, I wrote the journal about his life. How wonderful it is that God raised him up to reach the world for the Lord. If you'd like to have this, this is our offer for the week. Beginning of my legacy. Yes, I'm going to offer something every week for three years. Well, I'm so happy that we can have it on our program for the next couple of weeks at least because uh, I was so honored to write this about Jack's life. Dynamic and dedicated. Now, I think if you were to get this wonderful book that you would see yourself in it. And you see how Jack was so changed, how God has used him around the world. And some of the pictures are in here, too. So we'd be very honored if you would write to us or call us. And we'd be happy to get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Jack Van Impey, dynamic and dedicated, a man and his mission. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck. Thank you, Rexella. Oh, my friend, to order, have your credit card ready and call toll-free, 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of 1995 to Jack Van Impey Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of 1995 to Jack Van Appy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717 Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and I just want to say and encourage you to call or write us. Uh, this one means an awful lot to me, this offer. It moved my heart to write about this man of God, dynamic and dedicated. I trust that it will bless your heart as you read it. You know, Jack and I have been personally in 50 countries, you know, preaching the gospel. Right now we go around the world every week. But um, there are so many constitutions in all the countries. The best constitution in the world is the Bible. How true. Spend time with the Lord every day. We look forward to being with you again next week. Till then, remember, God cares for you. So do we. So very, very much. Bye-bye. The preceding program was sponsored by the partners of Jack Vanapie Ministries.